It seems like there's an atmosphere down here. There's wind, rain, even seasons. And look at these rivers, lakes and oceans. It's the most similar place to Earth we've seen so far. Maybe it was worth tearing ourselves away from Saturn after all. Except that's not water. That's liquid natural gas. There must be hundreds of times more natural gas here than all the Earth's oil and gas reserves. If we could get it home, it could power our cities, fuel our cars for thousands of years. Or maybe, one day, we could use it here to fuel a colony. Assuming there isn't life on Titan already. The Huygen space probe, dropped onto Titan's surface from Cassini, is here to find out. It's telling us there are organic materials in the soil. But it's so cold, minus 180 degrees. There's no way these could come together to form life. Unless Titan warms up. The sun is predicted to get hotter. When it does, maybe life will spring up here, just like it did on Earth billions of years ago. As the Earth gets too hot for us, maybe we'll move to Titan. One day we might call this distant place home. Home. We're at least a billion kilometers away now. Beyond this point, we lose visual contact with the Earth. We're standing on a cliff, looking out into the solar system's mysterious outer reaches. If we want to understand the universe, to reach its edge, we have to jump. Unseen from Earth, unknown for most of history. We're in the solar system's outer reaches. It's like diving down into the deep ocean. Those rings. It looks like Uranus has been tilted off its axis, toppled over by a stray planet. It's eerie out here. Already beginning to feel small, lonely. Maybe this is how we'll feel, what we'll find at the edge of the universe. But we've barely left the shore. Shrink the Earth down to the size of a pea, we've traveled less than two kilometers. But to reach the edge of the solar system, we've got to travel another 20,000 kilometers. Out of the deep, another strange beast. The god of the sea, Neptune. This giant is swathed in methane gas. And look, a storm the size of Earth whipped up by savage 1,500 kilometer an hour winds. Back home, it's the sun that drives the wind, but Neptune's too far away. Something else must be creating these ferocious winds, but nobody knows what. Our solar system is huge. It's alarming how little we really know about it. Plunging deeper, something to cling to. After all those balls of gas, a solid moon. Triton. Solid, but not stable. Just look at these geysers, cosmic chimneys pumping out strange soot. And this moon is going round Neptune in the opposite direction to the planet's spin. A cosmic battle of wills. 
that this angry moon is always going to lose. Neptune's massive gravity is pulling on Triton, slowing it down, reeling it in. One day, it'll be ripped apart by Neptune. And that's it. No more moons, no more planets to see in our solar system. It's getting colder. We're getting further from the sun, slipping from the grip of its gravitational tentacles. But look at all this. It's not a void. It's teeming with frozen rocks. Icy spheres. Like Pluto. Until recently, it seemed Pluto was alone. Beyond it, nothing. We were wrong. More frozen worlds. Discoveries so new, nobody can agree what to call them. Plutinos, ice dwarfs, cubuanos. Whatever the name, the implications are the same. Our solar system isn't the neat model we thought it was. Over 13 billion kilometers from home, the most distant thing ever seen to orbit the sun, another small icy world called Sedna, discovered in 2003. Its orbit takes 10,000 years and sends it 130 billion kilometers from the sun. Hang on, there's something else out here. 16 billion kilometers from home, the space probe Voyager 1. If it wasn't for this bundle of aluminium and antennae, we'd have no images of the giant planets, no clue about their strange moons. It's traveling 20 times faster than a bullet, sending messages home. And look, on its side, that gold panel, a kind of intergalactic message in a bottle. There's a greeting recorded in different languages. And a map showing how to find our solar system. But if you're in the jungle, is it wise to call out? Anyone, anything could hear our call, find out where we live and come knocking, friendly or not. A cloud of cosmic icebergs stretching for what seems like forever. They look like the comet we saw earlier. Maybe it started life out here, until something dislodged it, sending it towards the sun, just like the comets that may have planted life on Earth billions of years ago. And seeing all this ice, maybe they carried water to Earth too. It's an astonishing thought. The water in the oceans, in your coffee, even in your body, all from this distant celestial ice machine. We're eight million million, that's eight trillion kilometers from home. But in reality, this is only a baby step. Ahead, trillions of kilometers, billions of stars. This is it. Time to stop looking in and start looking out. To step out into the big, wide universe. Into interstellar space. Interstellar space, far beyond our solar system. What a view. Billions of stars like our own sun, many with planets, many of those with moons. It's hard to know which way to go. There are infinite possibilities in every direction. Whichever way, 
we're going to need a serious burst of acceleration. Forty trillion kilometers from home. A 150,000 year ride in a space shuttle. And we've only just reached the first solar system after our own. Alpha Centauri. Not one, but three stars. They're spinning around each other, locked in a celestial standoff. Each star's gravity attracting the other, their insane orbital speed keeping them apart. 